How Price Floors Affect Markets A price floor is a government-set minimum price that can be charged for a good. A binding price floor is a price floor set above the equilibrium price and causes an excess supply or surplus of the good. The quantity supplied by sellers will exceed the quantity demanded with a binding price floor. There will be unsold units of the good. Not all sellers will be able to sell all of their product. A non-binding price floor is a price floor set below the equilibrium price and does not cause a surplus or excess supply in the market. It is legal to charge more than the price floor, so the market price will rise to the equilibrium price. We have a price floor here of $7. The quantity demanded, plug the $7 into the demand curve, come down. Consumers want to buy three units. At the price floor of $7, take the $7, walk over to the supply curve, come down to the quantity axis. Sellers would like to sell seven units. There is going to be a surplus of four units. Sellers will produce and try to sell seven units, but buyers will only take three of those units, leaving four units unsold. We can visualize the size of the surplus is this distance here between the demand and supply curve at a price of $7. So this line segment between the supply and the demand curve, which is four units, seven minus three, represents the size of the surplus. So once again, sellers want to sell four more units than buyers want to buy if the price floor is $7. Again, this is binding. The price cannot fall to the equilibrium price of $5 where there is no surplus. If the price floor was set at $6, the surplus would equal two. At a price floor of $6, quantity demanded is 4. Just read off the demand curve here at a price of $6. And the quantity supplied at $6 is going to be 6. So the difference between 6 and 4 represents the surplus if the price floor was at $6. Now for a non-binding price floor, that'll be the case any time the price floor is set beneath or below the equilibrium price. So at a price floor of $3, this will have no effect on the market. Again, it's perfectly legal to have a price above the price floor. The price floor just sets a minimum price. So the price here will be $5 with uh, the equilibrium quantity of 5, neither surplus nor shortage. So the price in the market will be $5, the so equilibrium price where the quantity demanded of 5 units equals the quantity supplied of 5 units. If the price was $3, there would be a shortage, and that would be eliminated through a rising price. And once again, the price can rise above a price floor. With a binding price floor, with a binding price floor, there are basically three options. Eliminate the price floor to allow the price to fall to the equilibrium price or the market clearing price. Two, restrict the amount of output produced. The government could put a tax on excess production or limit the quantity produced. Consumers and taxpayers, however, are going to pay the burden of higher prices and higher taxes. Uh, the third option is destroy or dispose of the excess supply. The government could purchase the excess supply and store it, destroy it, or give it away as aid or foreign aid in the case of food, for example. Once again, though, consumers are going to pay the burden of the higher price. Uh, here's a New York Times article from August 29th, 1935. Consideration by the Agricultural Adjustment Administration of plans for plowing under a part of this year's estimated 377 million bushel potato crop was disclosed today in connection with an announcement by the agency that would begin to cons that it would begin strict control of the 1936 crop by taxation of excess production. Okay, that's it.